Good morning. Welcome to Maplewood United Methodist Church. I invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening song, The Father's House. today. Welcome to worship at Maplewood United Methodist Church. We are so glad you're here. We are actually getting the blessing of doing one of the most amazing things that Christ gave us to do, which is baptizing and welcoming a new person, two new people, because we're baptizing one and welcoming another, into our body and into our family, and that is what Christ gave us task of doing and I'm going to hope that you are all ready to celebrate today because you get cake before lunch. 
which is the perfect way to start the day. But, and if you're home, I hope you still celebrate that this family is coming to be part of our congregation and that we are taking this on. You will find, for those that are here and can be heard, I'm going to ask you to get excited when I ask you your part. Because one of the truths about baptism is we do it in this space, in worship, collectively because the family and the people coming to be part of the body are promising one thing, but you are promising as well. You're promising to be part of their journey, part of their faith, to lift them up when they need to be lifted up, to celebrate with them when they need to celebrate, and to be part of their family. So um, when we get to that part, I'll tell you how we're going to celebrate even more. Welcome to worship, and let us continue. I invite you to stand again as we sing our next couple songs in that sense of celebration.
God of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lay down your As I said, um, having a baptism is one of those great honors, one of those privileges of what God has called us to do is to indeed be ready to raise and to help walk with those that have come and said, I'm giving my life to Christ. And you will see on the slides as we go through this, there's going to be the questions that are answered by the family as they pledge to bring up their daughter Eleanor in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their savior as her savior then there's going to be a place where you respond as the congregation and there's the first one that says do you as the body of christ uh, of the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to christ because that's one of the other pieces is this is a place where we remember that this is what we believe that jesus christ is our lord and savior and that is a yes answer it said it will say we do and i just encourage you and this is that part of being Methodist. If you haven't joined yet and you would like to join, you can talk to me, but you're also welcome as a part of this body of Christ, formal or informal, to say yes 
to these questions. The next is, I'm going to say, will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care? And I've changed this to absolutely because I want you to hear and understand and to feel that this is a celebration. They're not changing that up there now. You'll see it when we get there. But I want you to say absolutely with conviction, with joy, and with hope. So you want to practice it right now? And then after the, then that, I'm going to baptize Eleanor at that point. And then we're going to change and Ryan is going to join by profession of faith. And a profession of faith, you can do hundreds of these in your lifetime. A profession of faith is recognizing that God has put it on your heart to act, to step forward, to be part of. And we celebrate that both Ryan and Aaron have come to be part of our congregation and we celebrate this profession of faith by Ryan as we gather here today. So y'all ready to celebrate? <laughs> so I welcome you to come forward, the Bennett family to come forward. Ah, she got pretty. Where's Ryan's bonnet? <laughs> She's sweet. Get her all pretty for a picture. This is Aaron. This is Eleanor. And this is Ryan. You have to be on camera with me, not away from me. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sins? I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to fight evil, injustice, and cruelty in whatever form they present themselves? I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, promise to serve him as your Lord, and union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. With God's help, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will. I will. This is the test. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one is we will too. Will you, as her parents, support and encourage her in, the, in her Christian life? We her will. will. And to the congregation, I ask, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care? Very good. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. Amen. Are you still willing to come see me? Huh? Yeah. Probably even more so if I let you play in the water. You, you can grab right a hold of that. I know Jacob will be so happy for that. that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so Eleanor, Riley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Holy God, that you protect her and help her know all of your love in her heart, that she will never have a moment of doubt, and that she will always be surrounded by your love in every place at all times. In Jesus' name, amen. So now I ask, now that you've reaffirmed your baptism, Ryan, <laughs> I'm keeping her. Yeah, oh. we're doing just fine. I'll give you back when they want to take her picture, but... Now I'm going to ask you questions. Having reaffirmed your faith, 
Do you believe that God is calling you to grow and serve as a disciple of Jesus Christ? I do. And as a member of this community? I do. Because of this call, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of this congregation, strengthening by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. I was going to say, was that an answer? I'm absolutely down there. No, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to trade you because I'm going to let, I'm going to pray for Ryan. This is, kind of, this is a lot of fuss. <laughs> Holy and gracious God, we give thanks that you've called this family to be part of our congregation. We give thanks for the blessing that you've put in Ryan's heart and the call for him to commit. But we ask you, God, to fill him with your spirit, to protect him and to help him to grow in his faith in a way that makes him rejoice every day that your love has given him life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I ask you guys, members of the household of God, I commend, commend these people to your love and care. Will you do all, your power in, all in your power to increase their faith Confirm their hope and perfect them in love. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to introduce to you Ryan and Aaron Bennett and Eleanor Bennett. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. So glad to have you here. And Eleanor's such a sweetie, she hasn't screamed through a service yet. <laughs> Do you say some of the traditions, some of this is your, uh, this is going back to the, um, remember I was new before all of the pandemic started. Some of the traditions, we have purchased a cross that will go on our cross wall in honor of Eleanor being baptized here. That was a tradition that you had and. She'll receive, my understanding, the same cross so that she will also have it in that recognition. There's also a new tradition, which is I started giving the tradition of when um, adults, and that's anybody over 12 in my life, <laughs> a Bible. So there is a Bible out here for Ryan, and I just ask you to sign it. You can write a note or you can just sign your name. This is a way that we welcome him in and let him know that he's part of our family and we won't quiz him on names later. And, but there, <laughs> there is going to be a cake and a reception after the service to just welcome them and get a chance to say hi. And uh, so now we continue with worship. In, that spirit, in the spirit of being the body of Christ, we enter into a time of prayer. I'm going to start us with a pastoral prayer, remembering that if you have a prayer concern you would like included, please go to our app and on the prayer wall, which is on your first page of the app, then you can add it, and Dominic will lift up that prayer concern as we shift to the next part, which is lifting up the names of the people that we've been praying for all week. And then we'll have a time of silence and close with the Lord's Prayer. So will you pray with me? Loving God, our week has taken us many directions. But as we gather here in worship, we find again the assurance and peace we have sought with every step. May our souls absorb your spirit, giving us the courage to follow you. May we open our hearts to your word, that our words and actions will be transformed. May our response to the horrible things in this world not be just sending our thoughts and prayers. Let them start there, recognizing your love for those in the midst of the tragedy. But let our prayers also give us the courage to act every day in ways that lift up, encourage, and show that love is the answer to all of our struggles. Not just love of friends, but love of our enemies. A love that changes our hearts from hate to recognition of each other's humanity. 
with the power of your spirit, let us seek more than just survival in this world. Let us seek your kingdom, made visible in our neighborhood, our country, our world. That there will be peace beyond understanding, because you, Lord, have taught us to love beyond anything we could imagine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Today we lift up in prayer of praise that Eve's surgery went well and is in that healing phase. Marlene Brady expects to go home um, Monday or at least sometime this upcoming week. Al Kirkley's bypass went well and is now in recovery. Don Clements has good news uh, that the treatments are working and they are starting a new round. I also lift up prayers of thanksgiving from Amy Moore, who has visited us a few times for a successful surgery and is now back home recovering. Charlotte and Ed asked for prayers. Charlotte is uh, dealing with some vertigo and is down. So we'd just like some prayers of comfort there and, and recovery. Sue asked for prayers that for Aunt Nevabel. Um, she is going to be uh, having hernia repair surgery and just for a successful surgery on August 19th. Barb Sims asked for uh, prayers for Aunt Judy, who has been having some frontal lobe seizures. And then she also asked for prayers for a good friend of hers, Dan Burroughs, who is experiencing some troubling family issues and just would like some prayers for peace in his heart. Also, prayers for, uh, continue prayers for Alma Wick, whose father is going into hospice care. Angel Yvonne's sister, who's in, who's in the hospital. Sue's sister-in-law, who's uh, dealing with COVID. Carol Thompson, Amber Schmitz, and Anna Morlock, who are both dealing with some cancer. A Lois Weiss. I ask for continued prayers for my uh, grandfather and my family. The Riley family, Gail Schroeder, and Pam, and Florence Haas. As always, we keep in our prayers the families and the victims of any of the shootings, all the people of Ukraine, our first responders and medical staff, our active military and law enforcement everywhere. Continue prayers for Bishop Reuben Sines, Jr., our District Superintendent Chad Engelmeyer, for Reverend Bethan Black, and for all of us at the church here at Maplewood. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to hear today's message, I invite you to sit back and hear and listen to the words of this next song. I speak Jesus. Oh, 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. So you might want to hold on to the warm fuzzy of the songs because this scripture passage is not warm and fuzzy. The passage is from Luke chapter 11 verses 37 through 34 and it is indeed where Jesus confronts the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. He said, after Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee asked Jesus to eat with him. So Jesus went in and sat at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he saw that Jesus did not wash his hands before the meal. The Lord said to him, You Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of greed and evil. You foolish people. The same one who made what is outside also made what is inside. So give what is in your dishes to the poor, and then you will be fully clean. How terrible for you Pharisees. You give God one-tenth of even your mint, your rue, and every other plant in your garden. But you fail to be fair to others and to love God. These are the things you should do while continuing to do those other things. How terrible for you Pharisees because you love to have the most important seats in the synagogue. And you love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. How terrible for you, because you are like hidden graves, which people walk on without knowing. One of the experts on the law said to Jesus, Teacher, when you say these things, you are insulting us too. Jesus answered, How terrible for you, you experts in the law. You make strict rules that are very hard for people to obey, but you are yourselves don't even try to follow those rules. How terrible for you, because you build tombs for the prophets whom your ancestors killed. And now you show that you approve of what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build tombs for them. This is why, in his wisdom, God said, I will send prophets and apostles to them. They will kill some, and they will treat others cruelly. So you who live now will be punished for the deaths of all the prophets, who were killed since the beginning of the world, from the killing of Abel to the killing of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple. Yes, I tell you, that you who are alive now will be punished for them all. How terrible for you, you experts on the law. You've taken away the key to learning about God. You yourselves would not learn, and you stopped others from learning too. When Jesus left, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees began to give him trouble, asking him questions about many things, trying to catch him saying something wrong. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. So probably one of the best things I remember from my mentor those first years in ministry was she asked me one day to answer the question of how the members of the church were like the Pharisees. Now, like you, my first response wasn't, that's nice. My first response was, what? They're good people. What are you talking about? How are they like the Pharisees? Because for us, the Pharisees have been made to be the bad guys throughout Scripture, and it's really easy to say, so the bad guys are the Pharisees, so how can we be the Pharisees? But the piece that I started to realize as I dug and looked to understand was the Pharisees were people who were trying with all of their might to the best of their ability to be faithful to God. They probably didn't get it any better than we did, do. But they were people who were truly 
trying to be faithful. And they dedicated time. And you see in this passage that they gave a tithe. They gave that tenth of everything they received. They tried to follow all the rules. And that is how many of us are indeed like the Pharisees. Our goal is to be in relationship with God, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> and we do have rituals and things that we hold on to that we think help us live into that relationship, whether perfect or imperfect. And the other part of this, and where do the teachers of the law fit in? They're, this other group, they're also just lay people that are part of the church. They're not the pastors. Neither of these groups are the pastors. The prophets and the apostles are the pastors. So these are the people that are part of, and the, the teachers of the law, those that studied it really hard, can be like some of us in that tendency of holding on to what the rules are. Has anybody ever heard the term, we don't do that this way, that way here? <laughs> or maybe we've always done it that way here before? You might find that those are the keepers of the law. <laughs> So how does that fit? Where does that fit? Have we all just been hit over the head by this passage? The truth is, is there is this balance. Jesus did come to save us from our sins, but there are pieces of his ministry that we kind of sweep away because they're tough. One was what I preached on last week was repent. We are indeed called to turn our lives around, not to just keep going in the direction we have always gone, doing the things we've always done. We are called by Christ. He comes to say the kingdom of God is near. The time is short. Make a choice. Follow me. Now, we know that there are those struggles and what does it mean to keep living our lives and we live in a time where there's all of these different views of what a good Christian looks like. I, I think I got put in the category of not a good Christian this week when I wouldn't tell you who to vote for. So we have to look at this passage and say what does it have to do to us? And some of it is the historical sense that Jesus' ministry, along with calling for repentance, called us to understand he comes directly up against the Pharisees and the teachers of the law in this piece of saying, let me show you where you got off track. For all of those religious people, he didn't come here to just wipe them out. He still eats with them. He still hopes that they will follow him. He still expects to see that God loves them in the end. But he does also say, here's the places where you got it wrong. And it's an important part in our journey of faith. What does it mean that we follow Christ and not the Old Testament alone? It's because of all of those places where Jesus teaches us that some of that legalism some of that sense of punishment and penalty are not what God was seeking for us to understand. And so when we look at this passage, we can look at the historical context and see that these two groups are being corrected by Jesus. He's showing them the difference between what they're doing and what God is asking for. They have all of these rituals around washing their hands and washing the pots and the utensils that they put stuff in and all the things that are about being clean and Jesus said you know that's all well and good but you haven't worked on the part that counts your heart you know you can wash the pot as many times as you want you can wash your hands as many times as you want if you still have hate in your heart you haven't lived into the relationship that God intended. Because that's what God intended us, is to have that relationship of love with one another and care, and not just go through outward appearances. He corrects him also, is, it's really good that you're giving a tithe, but here's the thing, you can't do it so that you get pats on the back. This isn't about you getting a special seat in the synagogue. This isn't you about you being seen as someone important. Our faith is about God being seen. 
not about us. And he pushes and said, you know, if you give everything that's in your bowl to the poor and still follow those rituals, then you'll be in the right. If you give, if you care about the ones that are struggling, if you actually show respect to the people that don't normally get respect, then you're living into that relationship. And he does the same in the challenge with the teachers of the law that I see again and again. And we have to pay attention because he said, here's the thing, you make all of these rules and nobody can follow them and you don't really try. We have lots of rules. And the truth was for them, that's that 144 rules that are listed throughout scripture. That Jesus is talking about, does anybody want to keep 144? I don't think we do very good at the 10. I've been with a group of teenagers wandering around town trying to find somebody who could actually recite the 10 commandments. It usually takes a while and a little help. So there is the historic context of Jesus saying, here's the difference between what I'm saying and where the re religious establishment of the time has gotten off track, the difference between what God is doing. And that is a key importance of Jesus' coming was to show us what God's plan was, to show us again in a clearer sense what it meant to believe in God and to follow him. Now, the more I sat with this whole piece of the how are the people of the church like the Pharisees and how does this fit us, the more it started to stand out to me that Jesus' warning to us is not a warning of, I'm going to strike you dead. It's a warning of, here's the things that can trip you up. Here's the things that can stop you from having that full relationship with God. And the Pharisees, for me, in the stories that they're in, not, I'm not you, one of the trip things that trip us up as human beings is self-righteousness as we build ourselves up and we say look how good I am I showed up to church three weeks this month I sat on the front pew I gave him five dollars extra right we can get to that place of I've helped I've done and that's what the Pharisees did as they built themselves up so if we look at that, that one of the key things that does indeed trip us up as Christians is starting to think we are better than others. And that God in this is warning us, watch out for that. It will cause you trouble. Here's the thing. Remember to love God, to truly love God. And indeed, yes, stick to those things that bring you closer to God, which are communion and participation and worship and Bible study and tithing and all of those things. But here's the other thing. Also practice justice for others. Not just seek what's right for you. Make sure that other people have a seat of honor at the table. I'm waiting for the day when churches are known not for the person who walks up to the new person and says, you're in my seat, move. But that we're known for the person who stands up and says, here, take my seat. It's got a good view. That we don't look and sit at the door and say, you're not allowed in, but we stand at the door and say, come on in, you're loved and respected. Jesus is warning us it's too easy to get to the place where we see ourselves as better than and put ourselves above everyone else. Our role is to be a source of hope. Our role as witnesses to Christ are to help other people know that God's love is real. And they know that by our actions, not just our words. 
And when I get to the teachers of the law part, that's another big stumbling block I see today in the church, out of the church, in the world. And it's this teachers of the law, just think about it. One of the truths that have been, that we can see all the way through scripture is this question of, is it about the law? Are we about legal rules? Are we about grace? Now, John Wesley, the founder of Methodist, says we're about grace. Most of us live with the hope that by faith alone that we are saved. But we get into this legal stuff all the time. I laugh. I refuse to give the right answer to the Christians who come up to me and say, so what do you believe about the Bible? Yeah, I'm not playing that game. I believe the Bible is the word of God. But I believe it's a lot more complicated than just quoting a verse. Because there's a lot in there. The teachers of the law got tripped up on controlling other people's behavior by setting rules and more rules and more rules so they could determine who was good and who wasn't. We're living in a time where I know for some of you the world doesn't look like anything like what you thought it would look like. I've talked to people who look at their kids and their grandkids and they go, I, didn't, I thought I had set them up better than this. I thought they had a better shot and yet their lives are falling apart. And we think somehow if we put more rules on them and demand more things, that we can straighten them out. If that were true, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross for us. We have to remember that we don't make Christians by forcing people to follow rules. We welcome people into the body of Christ by helping them to know Christ's love and his grace. Our call isn't to simplify the word so that you know that it is just as simple as if you show up to church every Sunday, you will get into heaven. Anybody believe that? I can quote scripture. <laughs> that isn't as simple as that. It is the same as washing our hands while holding hate in our hearts. Christ is warning us to look out for these things that really do get us as human beings. The tendency to want to be the one that's got the seat of honor and the tendency to want to tell other people what to do. And he's saying, look out for these things. These will not lead to true discipleship. These will not lead to a real relationship with God. The thing that le leads to a real relationship with God is truly opening your heart and reaching out to your neighbors and humbly remembering that God has given you everything you need. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, as your children, we are here as those who seek to live faithfully, to give our lives to you. And some days it feels like stumbling around in the dark, uncertain. But help us not to fall back on those things that give us false security. And to reach and to live in to your spirit, which gives us real life. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have invited you for cake afterwards and to sign the Bible. We have lots of fun things coming up, so I invite you to go to the Invitation to Action page. There is a new edition of this. We're kind of doing it every two weeks. Uh, we had a lot of fun at National Night Out. Uh, the the uh, pool joined with us helping collect school supplies. Um, we are giving those out tomorrow night to the kids at Laura Dodge School, so anybody that can be here, it will be crazy for an hour. It really will. Straight out, just as busy as we can be. Um, and we're going to, again, we're always dodging whether it's going to rain or melt us from heat, so we'll be doing that. But 
Five o'clock, we're going to set up the tables. Six o'clock, we're going to start handing out school supplies. If you can be here, please do. If you can let Mary Kay know ahead of time, there is a sign-up sheet out front. There's certainly room for more people to be here to make sure that the school supplies get to each kid that need them. And some fun things coming up. Sunday school will be starting in September on the 11th. So we hope that if you know some kids, you'll bring some kids, and we'll have some fun with that. And some of the studies are getting started back up, so we welcome you to join those. And if you were saying, I wish they'd do a study on, or I'd like a study on Tuesday night because that's the time I have, um, just let me know. We'll find out what we can work out. Now, you might end up leading it, but that'll be okay, too. <laughs> um, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I invite you to stand and sing or dance or listen to the words of this next song of our closing song. Okay. 